Nissan Stadium ready to host a soccer match for the third time in 2019. Last two match days featured either the U.S. women's or men's national teams. Let's go ahead and investigate the starting lineups in this USL Top 5 collision. We'll begin with the home side. Drastic renovations from when Nashville last played at home. Forrest Lasso and Jimmy Ockford have been brought in on loan. Carlton Belmar back in the 11. But the focal point, still the striker Daniel Rios in the 4-2-3-1. If you've watched the Nashville Soccer Club game, you know the name Daniel Rios. The prolific goal scorer is in the hunt for the Golden Boot, and he has already scored 12 goals in 19 appearances this year. Daniel Rios chasing Solomon Asante of Phoenix Rising in the Western Conference, who has 14 goals to lead the USL Golden Boot race. For the Indy 11, let's take a look at their lineup. It's a club that has a deep inventory of attacking options. Former league MVP Dan Kelly has been left on the bench. The industrious Thomas Ina Voltsen starts up top. But the man we focus on, the team's premier playmaker, swift and prolific Tyler Pasher. Keep your eye on number 23, Tyler Pasher. Not only does he have an 80% pass succession rate, but his breakaway speed and his lethal left foot have provided eight goals for Indy so far this season. We asked Gary Smith, the Nashville coach, about Tyler Pasher to describe the 25-year-old Canadian, and he said, quote, he's like a greyhound run. That he is. And then that combination of that with that left foot that he has, he's just an incredibly dangerous threat every time he gets the ball. Will be 86 degrees at kickoff. Fans have been filing into this stadium since they opened the gates 90 minutes ago. The long-anticipated rematch between Nashville and Indy 11. A 0-0 draw up at Lucas Oil Stadium in the last week of May. In fact, Nashville SC has never scored in this stadium. This is the third match that they've played at Nissan Stadium. 0-0 draws in the previous two. The man in the middle tonight, Elvis Uzmanovic, who's been delivering game-changing calls with an increased frequency in the USL Championship. A penalty kick or red card in six of his last seven matches officiated in this league. One of those penalties was awarded to Nashville during its away match at Birmingham in May. They've installed light fixtures and smoke machines next to the supporters tonight. We'll have to wait to ignite all of the pyrotechnics if Nashville can get a goal against one of the most stubborn defenses in the USL. In fact, the most stubborn defense in the USL, that of the Indy 11. Daniel Rios, 12 goals this season for Nashville SC. Tied for the lead in the USL Eastern Conference. Well, for the entirety of the winter, these clubs participated in an extraordinary off-season arms race, an endless stockpiling of weapon after weapon, golden boots and golden gloves, MLS players and most valuable players. With some of that escalation, a night just like this. There are a few summer nights more pristine. There are a few USL matches with more talent and promise. Two of the most ignitable soccer clubs in the league fastened together at Nissan Stadium. And the fuse finally lit. It's Indy 11 in Nashville SC on a magnificent evening in Middle Tennessee. Both teams proudly outfitted in the colors of their city's flag. Nashville in its luminous gold. Indy in their crisp collar and button blue shirts. 4-2-3-1 tonight for Nashville SC. In that formation because several key cogs not in the lineup tonight. Cameron Lancaster and Matt LaGrasa deemed unfit for this match despite not being in the injury report. They're recovered, but they do not have their match fitness back yet. However, mainstay Derek Jones remains in that Vanderbilt Health injury report. First involvement for Kosuke Kimura. Two holding midfielders tonight are Michael Reed and Bolo Akinyoti. They connected with the left back, Taylor Washington. And I do like what I just saw from Daniel Rios. He was pressing Newton and caused that turnover to, to end up at the feet of Kosuke Kimura and maintain possession for Nashville. It is a debut in gold for Horace Lasso, the center back for Nashville, who's paired with Jimmy Ockford tonight, who's making just his second appearance for the club. Both center backs on loan from Major League Soccer Clubs. It's Ockford from the San Jose Earthquakes and Lasso coming from Cincinnati. And that, that speaks volumes for Coach Smith, right? He's got two new center backs starting together 
in tandem in an important game. And that's just how much confidence he has in his team as a whole and the addition of those two new players to the roster. There's Lucas Farias, 24-year-old Brazilian. Played his youth soccer at Sao Paulo, one of the top clubs in South America. Now Alan Wynn. And the turn right by Ina Voldsen. Neatly done, Meloto connecting with Wynn. Has Rios and Meloto arriving to his right. He's picked out Lebo Meloto. Slammed off a defender and out for a corner. First sign of things for Nashville SC. So here's a little bit of the combination play. You can see Allen win that great touch into the inside. Yeah, I do think that's a nice ball to Lebo Meloto, but I think that if Wynn had taken a few more touches closer to the end line, that would have been a more dangerous finish. Nashville works extensively on scripted routines off of set pieces in practice. If they have one here, two players over to take the Coca-Cola corner kick. It's flopped in by Meloto, curled in towards the near post. And Evan Newton, the goalkeeper, watches it over the crossbar. Newton, one of four players signed from FC Cincinnati for Indy 11. And Nashville bringing in Forrest Lasso. So five players that played on this field last year for FC Cincinnati, either wearing blue or gold tonight. Sent towards Aliyun Jahate, speedy forward, isolating Oxford. He's picked out Ina Voltsen. Ayose. Pasher. Gibson. Neville Hackshaw, formerly of the Charleston Battery. Patty Barrett, formerly of FC Cincinnati. Gibson, another FC Cincinnati player, signed over the offseason. Spaniard Ayose back towards a streaking Pasher. First touch let him down in Nashville SC goal kick. But I think you saw right there that explosiveness that we alluded to in the pregame with Pasher. His ability to read service and that tight little run that he just made in behind the back line was not well tracked by Nashville. And they're going to have to be really cautious of that moving forward. Gary Smith told us the game plan in our weekly call with the coach. He said, Wants his team to come out flying, disrupt Indy 11, start out with a positive attitude, and get the crowd behind his team. He also wants his team to be adaptable if Indy 11 were to take control of possession or gain the majority of attacking opportunities. He doesn't want his team to get flustered. He knows they're playing a quality squad in Indy. Wants them to persevere through any challenging moments. So far, rather even through the first five or so minutes at Nissan Stadium. So, Washington closed down by Ina Voltsen, who turns 32 years old today. Hey, fans, keep up to date with us all season long. Follow our journey to Major League Soccer at NashvilleSC.com. Do you think he'll celebrate in Nashville? If he scores. Mm. Melodo, it's a first time hit. Did not lack in ambition. Melodo. 2018 Nashville SC Offensive Player of the Year, a goal or an assist in five of his last seven starts. It's a robust challenge from Michael Reed. He's drawn the whistle from Elvis Uzmanovic. Uzmanovic officiating Nashville for the fifth time in just two years. Nashville undefeated when he is the center official. Three wins and one draw for the boys in gold with Uzmanovic in charge. It's Gibson. Kenny Walker. Mitchell Osman, the Australian. Farias. Gibson, closed down by Melodo and extracted by Akinyoti. Win. Reserves the possession at the feet of Washington and switch the point of attack. So in the contrasting systems that we're seeing right here, you've got Nashville with a three central player with Meloto, Reed, and Bolu versus two players in the center of the midfield with Gibson and, um, and Walker. So here's the issue. 
they're going to have to find a way to defend against Lebo Meloto in that midfield, or he should be the target to be able to play off of throughout the day and should have plenty of space to be able to create and make it a dangerous attack for Nashville. He can sit in that pocket right under Rios and create and combine with him. It's a patient, expansive buildup for Nashville. It's the most stubborn team in the USL Championship. That's East and West. You look at those numbers to the right. First place in goals against is Indy 11. It's only allowed 12 goals. Ten of them have come on the road, though. A team that plays much differently at home, as most teams do, than they do on the road where they are more vulnerable. This is some constellation of passes for Nashville. As now they mine the attacking third for opportunities. Washington. Reed, Kosuke Kimura, Meloto. If Nashville can keep the ball moving side to side, and then they can find their break in the system right in the gap. They can find Lebo Meloto if they get their head up very quickly. It's a heavy touch from Belmar. Ayose trying to draw the foul against Michael Reed. Instead, ball finds its way back to Nashville's captain. Once again, the 11 sinks back into defense. Kamira. Reed prospecting. Akinyoti elects to go forward. It's an inventive idea from Meloto. And Indy has sprung the counterattack here. Seeking out Jahate. It's important defending from Oxford. Flexible defending as well. That was good defensive play because not only did he have Jahate on one side, but Pasher was closing him too. He had no option but to play that first time. And I think that's what you're looking at right now. You're looking at Indy with a really low line of defense, absorbing pressure, but then they're looking to spring Pasher and Jahate off on a quick counterattack when they can catch numbers for Nashville. Probably two of the fastest attacking players in the league with the ball. You think about Jahate and Pasher. Pasher leads the team with seven goals. Got a knack for scoring them late. Well, and especially if Nashville gets caught in transition. Here's Daniel Rios. Didn't get the contact he craved. Still no worries for Evan Newton. Talked to Gary Smith about Daniel Rios and the qualities that he has as a player and said, well, if you could pick a household name to relate him to that people watch on Saturday mornings. And the name he brought up was Harry Kane. World famous, world renowned striker for Tottenham Hotspur. And he said the reason why he picks Kane is one, the size, the ability and the, the finishing experience, but also his willingness to track back, defend on set pieces, hold up possession and be a focal point of an entire team. Well, and he's incredibly opportunistic in front of goal, right? I mean, the timing of his runs are stellar, and his finishing, and the, just the simple placement in the back of the net. It doesn't have to be flashy for Daniel Rios. It just has to be effective. Nashville has had the lion's share of possession. Explore the attacking third with Kamira. Send it behind Mexican striker Rios. No nonsense from Newton. Pressure continuing to build. You know, Newton hasn't been overly comfortable with the ball at his feet so far this game. Every time that Nashville has pressed him when the ball's been played back, he's created a turnover. Win. Rios taken away by Farias. And once again, clearance from Newton leaving much to be desired. That's three. He's a little unsure with his feet. And I know he's coming back from an injury, and he's a stellar goalkeeper, and he has tremendously great qualities 
um, of net minding. However, right now he's a little bit shaky with his feet, and hopefully Nashville will exploit that throughout Dude. the rest of the game. Dude played two matches against Nashville last year for FC Cincinnati. Seven saves and one goal against in those two combined games. Oh, he was lights out. It's intelligent defending by Oxford. He'll have his hands full with Aliun Jahate. As will Kosuke Kimura, who will provide covering support. Rios, no neatly done to Meloto. Into the attacking third, intercepted by Osmond. Ina Voltsen in a pocket of space. Hasher with room to roam. Akinyoti tracking to defend. Patty Barrett was seeking Ina Voltsen. Send it over the Dane's head. Well, through 13 minutes of this match, Nashville was 71% of the possession, a staggering number. I mean, for anyone watching at home, it, it is obvious right now where the possession arrow is pointed. Indy seems a bit lethargic, but organized. They have numbers behind the ball. They haven't given up good opportunities on frame. Everything has been a low percentage shot from distance. And so obviously this is their game plan right now, putting him into two banks to defend, to make Nashville have to move the ball laterally to create pockets of space for them to exploit. Melodo sinking back into the defensive end of the field to amplify the attack. Belmar. Akinyoti. Nashville building triangles in the midfield. Take it back and now Gibson springing Pasher. Jahate. He's gotten in behind Lasso. It's Jahate, save made by Pickens. Kick save on the first shot on target of the game. And just like that, Indy 11 shows how much venom they have in their counterattacks. What a great entry ball from Pasher, and it just shows you Jahate is so quick to get in behind. He snuck in on the outside shoulder of Lazo, but Matt Pickens, the hero of Nashville, to the rescue, fantastic foot save. Not much he could have done because he did a great job of getting that foot down, making that save, and now Nashville's gonna have to defend the corner kick. Delay is because there's a player down on the other side of the field, it's Ayose. 33-year-old left back for Indy 11. Player with world-class experience, over 50 La Liga appearances for Tenerife in the Spanish top division. Once scored against Real Madrid. The 33-year-old hushing his participation in this match. Working out what looks like to be a, it's an ankle turn. Medical assistance as always provided by Vanderbilt Health. It's a Coca-Cola corner kick. Lucas Farias to take. Hurled in and met by Jimmy Offer. Hey, fans, see the latest team content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at our handle, Nashville SC. Jahate. Took three Nashville players to win possession back. Allen Wynn bombarding up the field, sliced down by Pasher. Cynical challenge from Pasher, noticed by Elvis Uzmanovic in the first booking of the match. Allen Wynn is 
so quick at the ball at his feet. Look, he gets in between the two defenders, Pasher comes back, and the, the job of the midfielder, right, to hold up play because if Wynn gets in and gets one versus one going at Osman in that back line, it's incredibly dangerous. Professional foul, worthy of a yellow, early in the match to award a card, but definitely a booking type offense. Let's not forget Elvis Uzmanovic, the referee tonight. Penalty or red card in six of his, his last seven matches in charge. Washington was floored contesting the header. Colliding legally with Thomas Inavoldson, now harmlessly for a throw in. It's the third yellow card of the year for Pasher, so no danger of suspension. Here is Pasher. His connection with Jahate. Maloto. Odd numbers. Sit in the path of Rios. Have to draw Evan Newton off his line. Eight of Rios's 12 goals this season have been the team's first of the night. in the top four not their conversion rate not their goal scoring prowess it's because they've built so many points on a sturdy defense but it's quite puzzling Ronnie you look at all the players on this team that were signed to score goals yet tied for 17th in the league in goal scoring and Dane Kelly second leading scorer all time in the USL on the bench tonight and Jahate, a player that they signed via tryouts, an open tryout, starts as a striker. Except they're in the top four in the standings. So their defensive presence, and they're just scoring enough goals to win, right? They're not loading up the scoreboard, but they're effective in their, their execution of goal scoring opportunities, one. And then two, they're stingy, stingy, stingy defensively. They have a great organization. They have really compact. They're allowing people in pockets that aren't dangerous. And then when they do get into dangerous spaces, they're dropping and collecting that very quickly. So I can see why they are in the top four right now in the league. Um, but I also agree with you. you know, do they have more dynamic attack that they can add into this mix? In the 11 managed by Martin Rennie, who at 44 years of age has managed six teams in his career and for various reasons has never had a third season at any of them. This is his second campaign with the Indy 11. Guided the club to a seventh place finish last year, but aspirations much, much higher in 2019. Hey, fans, get Nashville SC updates and alerts all year long by clicking follow on ESPN.com. 21st minute from Nissan Stadium, Nashville SC's future MLS home. This time next year, we'll have played Almost a half season's worth of Major League Soccer games between these walls. Maloto with Rios to his right. Late run coming from Michael Reed. It's still Maloto towards Rios! Stirred wide. A rare miss from right on top for one of the most clinical strikers in the league. In Nashville, just about a foot away from taking the lead. But look at Lee Bomoletto, great defensive touch right there. Isolates on the tackle, lifts the ball right over it. But then it's the run of Daniel Rios. He recycles his run, he holds it, and he just opens up his hips just a bit. He had the right idea, putting the ball back where it came from, but just a little bit wide. was Rios who told the media this week he just needs one or two chances for a goal. That was one. There aren't many that he does miss. That would have blown this game wide open. Forced Indy to come out of what is right now 10 players defending behind the ball. 
Absolutely. And if you look at, at some of the statistics, you see that Indy scores a lot of goals late in the game. So they sit in, they absorb pressure, they look to counter, and then they get a more aggressive in the second half. But if Nashville gets on the board early and often in the first half, they're going to have to break that defensive shape and start taking more risks. Farias. Pasher inverted now to his right. Walker. Gibson, the Knoxville native. He's played his high school soccer in Tennessee. Won a state championship. Iose. Ina Voltsen. Barrett. Farias once more. Jahate. Slammed off of Reed. Rebounded to Farias. Under the feet of Pasher. Adjusted by Rios. Returned by Meloto. Daniel Rios isolated against Osmond. Still Daniel Rios. Now Michael Reed. Back for Rios! Elation! Eruption and history! Nashville Soccer Club, its first goal in Nissan Stadium. And of course it's him. We know the name, Daniel Rios. Not only was Daniel Rios the creator, he takes on, he gets composure, raises his head, finds the feet of Michael Reed, who lays the ball back across to a first time finish. Daniel Rios' movement off of the ball, that tight little run inside to the near post, finishing it first time after he played the ball out to Reed was absolutely phenomenal. Class act, not only was the creator of that goal, but he was the end product of that goal too. And that was just fantastic attacking by Daniel Rios. It's that future feeling right here, right now. A goal from an MLS player, Daniel Rios, in his future MLS home. And for Michael Reed, the captain, it is his first assist of the season. Well, and I was just about to say, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the quality of the delivery from Michael Reed. He put it exactly into the path of Rios's run, perfectly weighted and very effective in the way that he put that ball right there, made it very easy for Rios to finish that ball. Well done, Captain Reed. And Ronnie, now how does that goal warp the complexion of this game? Indy look content to let Nashville possess the ball, and try and spring counterattacks, but now down a goal. Does that change their game plan here in the new near future in this first half? Yeah, I don't think they're going to change a whole lot at this point in the game. They're, it's not in a pressure situation yet. There's loads of time on the clock. They can stick to the game plan. They'll still could get an opportunity where they can spring someone on a counterattack as long as they remain compact defensively. I don't think we're going to see a lot of risks or changes for Indy at the very minute. And already one of the longer possessions for Indy immediately after the Rio's goal. Ina Voltsen back for Pasher. Slammed off of Otford. It was destined towards the back post. And Indy reloads with Iose. Send it over the head of Farias. Gives the thumbs up in the direction of the sender. Here's the replay. Nearly an equalizer. So Nashville's got to be careful with Pasher sitting in that that pocket right in front of Lasso and Oxford, and that was a great defensive play by Oxford. But it it came at a bit of a, a stressful time, right? They can avoid that if they can manage that space a little bit more effectively in dangerous areas. Let's go down onto the pitch. Our Paris Lawson. Well, guys, this was the game plan for Coach Smith from the start. When I talked to him earlier before the game, I asked him, considering how effective Indy is, 
in the half, second half of matches with scoring, how important is it to get on the board early? And he said, if we can impose ourselves early and get the crowd into it, we have more than enough capable bodies to make plays. And you saw that in full effect with that last Rios goal. So Ronnie, 27 minutes in. Nashville with the lead. It's a team that has been so stubborn on the defensive end, the Indy 11. Just their 13th goal allowed this year over the midway point in the USL season. No matter what happens tonight, Nashville cannot catch Indy by sunrise in the standings. But this would help trim the gap. Take a look at the full USL Eastern Conference standings at halftime. Will be our halftime presented by Nissan, but still more soccer to be played here in the first half at Nissan Stadium. See what response the visitors have. Jahate, flag stays down. Matt Pickens gets the start tonight over Connor Sparrow, his 12th start of the season. He's faced Indy 11 plenty of times, mostly during his NASL days at the Tampa Bay Rowdies. In fact, this is the 13th time that Matt Pickens has faced the Indy 11. Oh, is this an old goal? It's just wide. Near disaster. And Indy in shambles in their back. Without stating the obvious, there's definitely a disconnect between the back line of Indy and Evan Newton right now. I mean, that is just just a sheer mistake. It's a miss hit. Newton was coming off of his line to collect the ball, I believe, and he's caught off balance. And, and they're very fortunate that that didn't go into the back of the net. Coca-Cola corner kick, 29th minute. Launched in and grabbed by Newton. Near disaster for Indy 11. And again, it's Tyler Pasher. He's found a soft spot in the defense. Covering support coming from Kosuke Kimura. Rios, the goal scorer. Floated to Belmar. And Nashville settles at the feet of Bolo Akinyoti. They bypass the midfield. Directly seek out Daniel Rios. Melodo, it's a punctual run from Washington. Reed, that's the game's lone assist. Kamira. Melodo, sprung Belmar, has a win in Rios inside the penalty area. It's Kamira's cross, greeted by Barrett as far as Washington. Rio swarmed right at the edge of the penalty spot. Immediately retrieved by Reed. Win. Melodo. Still Lebo Melodo. Rios back for Melodo. Important challenge from Gibson at the crucial moment, and Chicante pulled over by Jimmy Youngford. Well, fans, Major League Soccer is almost here, and season tickets are now available. Ticket packages start at just $25 a match. Payment plans are available to purchase your 2020 MLS tickets. You can visit NashvilleSC.com to do so.
Nashville one win in 10 matches versus top 10 teams this season in the USL Eastern Conference. Going to have to change that pretty soon. Now several draws in there. Yes. But this would be a signature win and a long way to go to accomplish it. Ina Voltsen. Ina Voltsen seeking out Chikate. Snared by Matt Pickens. Thomas Ina Voltsen spent most of his career in the Eredivisie, the top division of Holland. Once sold for $1.5 million. Player that has played in Europe and also internationally actually started a match in the 2010 World Cup for his native Denmark. So much talent on the field and also off the field tonight. Cameron Lancaster not suiting up for Nashville and Dane Kelly on the bench, former league MVP. So two golden boot winners of years past. Oh, now that's just a silly foul, foul by Hackshaw. Rios is going away from goal, touching away. He's all he has to do is stand him up and keep his patience. And now he's put himself in a situation that Nashville's going to have a set piece from within 20 yards. It allows them to try out their newest set piece toy. It's Forrest Lasso, who has walked into the 18 yard box, six foot six. Lasso brought in on loan on Wednesday. Was able to practice with the team Thursday and Friday. That's it. That's all the acclimation he's gotten in Nashville. Thrust into the starting lineup. And now the tallest target in the box for a steering committee of two players, Lebo Meloto and Taylor Washington. Jimmy Ockford also in, scored in his debut, the center back on the road at Memphis just last week. And Indy with all 11 players inside the box. Comes in short. There's a dummy from Allen Wynn. Rios' arrival has missed times. Well, it's Tyler Pasher trying to touch by Kimura. Quality defending from the veteran from Japan. 35 years old, Kimura. Fitness level of an 18 year old. 10 years younger, excuse me, 10 years older than the player he's defending tonight in Tyler Pasher, who's been given the liberty to switch sides. We've seen him on the right, we've seen him on the left. Now Farias cutting back on Belmar. It's Farias trying to find a shaft of light on the near post. And the door closed by Matt Pickens. I like Farias cutting and chopping to the inside, and he gets to his non-dominant foot with his left. He hesitates just a little. A pretty routine save for Matt Pickens. No pressure on if he spilled it right there like he did. Easy routine save. Not enough pace on it for it to do any damage. Would have been the first goal of the year for Farias. Well, fans follow Nashville SC and the rest of the USL Championship all season long on ESPN+. Plus. Home to the USL, MLS, and more. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Kosuke Kimura. Astute defending from Hackshaw. Indy 11 has scored in all eight of its road matches this season. Comes a challenge from Jahate. Now Meloto. It's Daniel Rios who already has a goal. Still Daniel Rios laying it off. Bolu Akinyoti. A rare attempt from Akinyoti. Could not steer it on frame. Daniel Rios plays, holds it up just a bit, chops back, looking for a window on his right foot. Can't find one. Lays it back to Bolu Akinyoti. Just gets a little bit under the ball, puts it over. Over the top of the goal. I think he wants it back. Indy's starting to get a little fiery on the pitch. I don't know if you've noticed, but they're going after the referee after certain tackles that are occurring in the midfield. They're starting to get feel as if they deserve a few more calls on the pitch right now. It's 
Rios. Akinyoti. Staccato passing. Washington. Win. Remember Nashville without the services of also Matt LaGrasa tonight. Injured against Louisville. Has recovered, but still needs to get his match fitness up, so therefore not selected for the 18. Belmar. It's been inverted now on this near side. A little bit different look. You've got Wynn on his right foot. Belmar could cut back from his left onto his right. Akinyoti. Melodo in a pocket of space. Towards Rios. And again, stirred and steered back towards the target by Patty Barron. So Nashville has inverted its wingers, Ronnie. We've noticed, you've talked about it, and I'll ask you to analyze it in just a second, but it's Tyler Pasher who's meandering his way through Nashville's lines, and Alan Wynn has hauled him down in a precarious spot. So the switching of the wings. Wynn now in the right of Nashville's formation, and well, it was one of his first encounters with Tyler Pasher. Well, and here's Wynn having to do the defensive work, and Pasher's just so explosive and so fast. You know, when when got to do a little bit better job of keeping his head in this dangerous space. However, with Pasher being as dangerous as he is with the ball and without, sometimes you're going to have to take a risk like that to be able to hold up the play. Allen Wynn, the lone impediment for the free kick. Nashville with all 11 players defending. Spun in back post. Hackshaw heading it back across the frame of the goal. And punched to safety by Daniel Rios. Matt Pickens was convinced that ball had crossed the end line. The flag did stay down. I don't know if we're going to have a replay on it, but Hackshaw did a great job of reframing that ball and pulling it back across the goal. Take a look at the replay. The first question is, this ball stay in play. Well, the play started just a little bit late, but that was that came off Taylor Washington. Ball in the six-yard box pinballing and around. Sure, here it is. There's Hackshaw playing it back across. I mean, great, and it comes off of Taylor Washington's left foot. But Hackshaw did a great job of bringing that ball back into play, framing it back across the goal, putting it into a dangerous spot. Taylor Washington in the right space, probably not the best clearance that he would have hoped for, but clearly saved a goal scoring opportunity. But again, an unnecessary foul wide. We saw one with Hackshaw now. We've seen one with Wynn. One back by Belmar. Hey, soccer fans, get your official Nashville SC gear, including MLS styles, online at NashvilleSC.com. Seeing a whole lot of that gear around the stadium in Nashville's future MLS home. Not just around the stadium, I've seen it all over town. Restaurants, shopping, exercising. There is a definite Nashville Soccer Club movement going on in this town. And if you haven't joined yet, I highly recommend it. You don't want to miss this. Boys in gold, exploring the width of the pitch. Supply line denied by Farias. Possession, which was at one point over 70% trending towards Nashville, now down to 53% for the home side. Melodo. Oh, he sent Allen Wynn down the far side. Rios awaiting the service. It's still Allen Wynn. He'll go alone! A second strike in Music City. Allen Wynn and the boys in gold back for more.
The Dex imaging goal for Allen Wynn. Uh, the quality of the ball that we didn't quite see to Allen Wynn was in the correct seam. But thank you, Allen Wynn, for taking on inside of the 18, chopping back to that left foot, finishing that ball near post. Look at this. Great isolation touch. Even a better second touch. Gets squared up to the goal. Takes it off of his left foot. Has Newton going to his right as far as his weight distribution and puts it back and slots it down to Evan Newton's left side. Something I've been looking for from Allen Wynn is that take on ability and the final product of finishing the ball. And that right there was what Allen Wynn is capable of doing every time he faces up on a defense. It's Allen Wynn's second goal of the season. And it was made possible by the inversion. Switching Allen Wynn over to that far side. The fresh look is definitely helpful. You know, was he put over there to manage Pasher? because he was so dangerous, or was he over there to exploit and get after Hackshaw? And he trying to snatch it right back. Gibson, Ayose, Hackshaw venturing forward. And now Pasher. Gibson, slipped through the line. And eventually discovered by Pickens. The assist credited to Lebo Meloto. That is his seventh assist of the season. So maybe at halftime we can highlight the quality of the ball that Lebo Meloto played into Allen Wynn. He caught the correct seam. Such a dangerous ball at the right pace that was put in behind. Belmar blows right by Farias. Limited options. Meloto, Rios. Fully done by Hackshaw. Nashville smelling blood in the water. They want another one here while Indy is still flustered. Meloto. Hauled down and a handball call on Meloto. Closing moments of this first half in a stadium in which Nashville had played two previous times and never scored. Two massive home goals. And they'll attack towards their supporters in the second half. Rios could hold up play. Meloto towards the pacey Carlton Belmar. And a full gallop bearing down on Newton. Oh, that neatly was, done that by was well handled by Newton. He has found his footing and his confidence a bit. That was a lovely little chipped ball right over the streaking Belmar. Gibson with two minutes of added time in this first half. Farias' first time cross dealt with by Lasso. It rebounds back out to Gibson, who's gone down. Farias plays this ball. He's onside. And Kosuke Kimura clears it out for a goal kick. And now the flag comes up. A delayed hoist of it. You can tell Farias was reluctant to apply the cross. And the reason why he was offside. Aerial duel won by Hackshaw, who is nudged by Meloto. Tyler Gibson, given the universal no more, signed by Elvis Uzmanovic. Just seven combined fouls between these two teams. We're expecting maybe a bit more physical of a match, especially 
taking into account the last meeting, 0-0 draw at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. That came in late May. On someone's wedding day, if I remember yes, correctly. I did have, rarely do I have more important things to do. Skipped on a National the, SC game skipped day. That was an one important of them. broadcast of watching Indy play versus Nashville on the road to get married. Priorities. <laughs> Dying embers here of this first half. And there is the whistle that sends the teams to the dressing rooms. Gary Smith and his side roaring out of the gates at Nissan Stadium. A goal in the 24th minute from Daniel Rios, followed by a 42nd minute goal from Alan Wynn. Flags held high from the supporters section. As we dive into our halftime presented to you by Nissan, teams head to the locker rooms there is one of the goal scorers Daniel Rios scored the first Nashville SC with a 2-0 lead at halftime 